say if i were to start a d2c brand today uh, what are the opportunities you are seeing what would be your advice to me that how should i go about finding out that opportunity for myself yeah so first thing is you know uh, there are two ways of looking at it i will say uh, go with high margin products okay because see i think couple of years back again if you go back to the covid times okay the cost of acquisition was very very affordable right so that is the biggest leverage that you have for the d2c brand right mm-hmm. uh, so we, we used to you know uh, have this uh, mindset that offline is expensive because you have to buy a you know store real estate a lot of expenses with that you know and the, then we have the supplier distributor wholesaler all these people are the middlemen yeah. who are eating away your profits okay yeah. and then we said we have online okay so this whole d2c came from the us the the, the western world okay uh, where this this concept is very popular okay so uh then if you look at it going online has a big advantage because the majority of people there pay online they use credit cards right so that way the rto or cancellation or cod problem is not there right so that is one less problem to worry about and then you have the, the next big problem which is your uh you know your facebook ad cost or your google ad cost right if that is stable and if it's affordable that is when you make margin okay so typically in the d2c e-commerce world there are two middlemen which we don't talk about we we talk about the middlemen in the offline space uh which is the supplier wholesaler etc but in the online space you have the ad company the, the, the ad platform that is the first middleman second middleman is the shipping companies correct right so they also eat away a lot of profits because cash on delivery is a big problem right are when you do an rto it is double the charge yeah right so so this so when you have less margin with 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 the cost going up the ad cost going up and there is inflation overall right so uh, if possible when you start when you start small stay away from low margin products okay uh, choose product which have high margin like jewelry like furniture right home decor which are like luxury items okay which people buy for the sake of status hmm. right so there they don't you know bargain or they don't you know sort by price and buy they buy because they like something and they want to show off right so oh, that's that's a, a very nice way of putting it that uh, you know and i read it somewhere that status seeking products will always yes. have high gross margin yes and uh, that can be one thing which yes. i think at least uh, i don't know if it's valid globally but it's super super valid in india yeah uh, yeah you know i i remember uh, in a conversation with kunal shah he telling me that yeah. if you look at uh, products in our living room versus in our yes yes the products will have higher gross margin just because it's a high showcase value yeah similarly yeah. i think one should look at fashion uh, jewelry anything which you know you wear or let's say what you said uh whether it's home decor etc yeah uh, people should look at doing high gross margin products yes so that is one and if at all you are going for low margin products if you have low margin products that is the way you want to go okay then uh the mindset should be the big shift that even i am seeing right now with with some some very interesting brands is that don't use advertisement to sell okay use advertisements to buy data hmm. right so uh, i think previously you would have seen lot of this you know personal care brands uh, starting off with the products like a face wash or a hair oil or a shampoo okay 400 rupees products okay that's what they used to sell aggressively you know even during the pandemic okay some companies were built based on face washes okay right. so uh if it's a 400 rupee product okay you know we, we know the cogs and we know the shipping cost and etc so if the cost of acquisition in terms of you know uh, facebook ads or google ads is just less than 100 okay it just it will just break even right but today you know the cost of acquisition for a face wash is like anywhere around 250 to rupees 300 right yeah yeah uh, with the with the uh, state that we are in right now okay 
So now I'm seeing a lot of brands who are actually giving away these products for free hmm. just to acquire data, right? I saw an example with MyGlam. They are giving lipsticks for free. Okay, uh, they, they they'll just ask you to pay the um, shipping charge, shipping fees, right? And I saw another example with Mama Earth, where they are also giving away some uh, onion shampoo free. Uh, so their their claim is it's completely free. You pay the shipping cost first, but once you once you get the product, we will do a cashback also, right? So essentially, what is what we are seeing is they are spending close to three hundred to four hundred bucks uh, just to acquire the customer data, plus I mean a, a data that is valid, like a valid email, valid phone number, valid address. Yeah, yeah, right. And I think most of these brands are also using GoQuick. So so once they enter the name, email, address, it is there and it is verified, right? right. So you start off by with this with the, with the mindset of hey, let's go. Facebook is there to rent data. Okay, essentially we are renting the audience, right? So instead, uh, take your marketing budget as an investment to buy data. Yeah. Right. So once you buy data, okay, this is when it becomes now very interesting for the brands to okay, I have spent four hundred bucks to acquire a customer's data. Okay, now what should I do to do upselling and cross selling, right? So now we can see moving forward this area. I think uh, in the in, in the previous decade, uh, when it comes to e-commerce, a lot of focus was there in you know running ads and getting sales immediately. Like put one dollar and get five dollars back. Okay, yeah. that's going away. Got it. So now it's like go spend money, get the data, and now set up the post-purchase experience. Okay, to cross-sell, upsell, resell, and and get referrals. Right. So we can say two parts of the funnel. Okay, the first part is getting the customer and at, at profitable uh, cost. That is not happening now. Rather, invest money, get data, and now optimize for the post purchase experience. Okay, this second part of the funnel was not not looked at, you know, uh, very closely in the past. But now brands will have to adapt on the post purchase experience, and and I, I, I think that is where WhatsApp and uh, you know. Conversations, uh, telecalling—all these things will play a very, very big part. 